Hello, everyone. I think we are live. So I'm just going to quickly check um, the live on Facebook. Um, hi, everyone. Good evening. And for everyone that's floating from all over the rest of the world, I don't know what time it is right now. I only know that John Wetton's time is 7.30 a.m. And he's looking very sleepy. <laughs> so it's, in Singapore, it's uh, 9.30 p.m. And we've managed to convince John to wake up super early to get into the office by 7.30 a.m. to do this live with us. So I cannot be more grateful that um, we have him here today with us. Um, now, hang on a minute. Let me just make sure that... Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, I'm gonna quickly introduce you guys to John because if you have been around just very, very recently, like you just joined Young Living very recently, you may not know who John is, um, but for all the old timers who's been around, um, I am very certain that you guys will know of John um, because you've seen him around with Gary quite a bit okay and so let me this is going to be very casual by the way uh, so i wanted this whole week uh, as we celebrate gary um that the whole intention was to bring together um people that i call dear friends to myself and people who've also worked very closely with gary um and to have them just share with you guys um, insights, stories, things that will, you know, just help you reconnect back to who this man is for us. Um, we have, we all have so many stories about Gary, but it always is wonderful just listening to someone else tell us more. But before that, uh, my introduction to John, this is really interesting because when I was speaking to him and, um, just preparing for this, I realized that he joined Young Living just about the same time I did. I feel so old. We are like super oldies in Young Living. So I, I started Young Living in 2007 as a user. And then after that, I found out uh, John actually joined in 2008, but he did not join straight on as Gary's, what he calls traveling assistant. So I'll let him tell the story himself, but he first joined Young Living in 2008. And then a couple, I don't know how long more to that, that he started his adventures with uh, Gary and he was just traveling everywhere. So my memory of John is that ever since I started traveling to convention, to any event that Gary was going to be there, I will always see John somewhere He's like, he's, he's this guy that in my first impression was like, this is the only person possible in the whole wide world, in my opinion at that point in time, that was capable of actually catching up with Gary. So for all of you guys who actually know how fast Gary moves, how wide he travels, the number of lives he lead at any one point in time, he's doing so many things all together at the same time. Um, there's always this other person just following close behind him. And, and to me, that's John. It's like, we've been to Oman on one of the diamond trips and we've climbed some of the treacherous mountains and I watch how fast he goes after Gary because he needs to film, he needs to video, he needs to make sure that he's doing what Gary needs him to do. So he's like, he's either a couple of steps behind just making sure things are coming up in the correct way or he is fast forward like way ahead of Gary because he knows where he's supposed to go where Gary is going to go so it's just fascinating for me all the time just watching this person um, who's just been there supporting Gary all this while so I have to say that it's such such a privilege John to actually have um, have you be our very first guest for this series? Because he was actually joking with me and saying that 
um, this is to warm up to the rest of the guys. I love the rest of the guys, by the way, that we're going to hear from the rest of the week. But I adore John. I really do. I think he's a great person. And I think that he is just one stable pillar and this amazing person that you must hear from. And he doesn't get on stage very much. You don't hear him very much. He's very quiet. He doesn't have a Facebook, I think. Um, so he's elusive that way we have to track him down to find him. So with that, I'm going to pass it over to John. I'm going to mute you. Hello and good morning. Hi, good morning. Thank and... you for the, uh, the very amazing introduction. Yeah. Um, that was very kind of you. I do want to just add a few points, however, um, that there are so many people that, um, that help and, and helped Gary. I just might have been the most visible <laughs> to the members. Um, and so, and kind of the most visible omnipresent, but I just want to also recognize that there are so many, or there were so many other people in the background that were working extremely hard at the farms and here at the office and in the labs, um, working very personally for Gary. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I, anyway, I just want to make sure that that everybody knows that I, I wasn't just, I, yeah, I just did one small part of Gary's life that happened to be very visible, so. Yeah, I won't take my intro back. <laughs> so you're, you're still an amazing person that we've always seen um, with Gary. So I'm gonna have you just jump in and quickly tell, tell the rest of the world, who, whoever is tuning in right now, I think, is, which is a lot, um, okay. a little bit of history. Um, because we did know that you came in not as Gary's personal assistant. Tell us a little bit how you actually ended up working so closely with Gary. Yeah, um, I'll, I'll kind of tell my whole story actually. So um, from the very, very beginning, I have, I have this friend that I knew from Taiwan and we were, so I, so I met her in Taiwan and then we ended up um, being at the same school uh, later here in Utah. And we just stayed in touch for, for years and she got married and had kids, but we would, you know, kind of just stay in touch from time to time. And she, um, I had this, uh, I was dating this girl and she, and she was sick. And for some reason I was talking to this friend from Taiwan and she was like, oh, I should give you these essential oils. And I was like, essential what? <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. And I think she gave me some uh, anise and I can't remember what, what it all was, but um, so anyway, we stayed in touch, and uh, so that was my, that was my very first connection to essential oils ever. And I remember going on Wikipedia and being like, "What is what is going on? Are these like fatty oils that are flavored?" And then I learned a little bit about the chemistry, and but that was probably like 2006 or something. I really don't know exactly when that was 2006 2007 maybe mm -hmm. and uh then later she um she called me up and she was like hey can you help me she's like i i know you're handy with construction stuff can you help me and, and my husband tile our kitchen and i was like yeah sure I'll. and uh so i went over there on a saturday and and she said are you looking for a job right now because i didn't have a job and I said, yeah, actually I am looking for a job. And she said, um, well, I'm changing jobs in this company, Young. Oops. Mark, you should apply for the job and see if you can get it. And um, she, she actually recommended some, uh, I'm getting a note that my internet connection is not stable. Is that mine? Yeah, we had a little bit of lapse, but you're good now. Okay, let me just double check that I'm, yeah, I'm, it couldn't okay. be better. I'm at the office. So. Yeah. And anyway, so, uh, so I, so I took, uh, this all has a point, by the way. I'm not just telling a story to tell a story. I, I do, I, I do want to make a point with all of this. 
And so she recommended some online classes that I could take that were very specifically related to this uh, software and this job that I would need to do. So um, I studied really hard for about 10 days. <laughs> like I probably didn't do anything else but study and practice for 10 days. And then I went in and I, and I totally aced this job interview. And um, the, the truth is I had actually never used that software ever before in my life. <laughs> yeah, but I, now we know. But I didn't tell anybody that. <laughs> so, um, and so then I'm just, I'm doing this job and my, so my first job was to do the, like, uh, it's kind of like typesetting for the labels. Mm. So, and Young Living was, so this was April 2008 was when I started. And Young Living wasn't very big back then, but I know that Germany had opened recently. And so I was, I remember doing a lot of German labels and mm. I actually learned a tiny bit of German, not how to speak it necessarily, but I learned the translation and to, to read it a little bit. So, because I was working on a lot of German labels to get the German market open. That's, that's what I recall anyway, I, maybe I'm wrong, but, um, so that was, that's how I got a toe in the door to Young Living. And then kind of the segue to working with Gary is also really sort of interesting. Um, so one day I was working on a nutrition label, probably for something like Power Meal or something like that, just some sort of nutritional label. Mm. And so you've probably seen, uh, well, at, at least in the United States. Um, I don't know what they look like in Singapore, to be honest. But we have the nutritional or the supplement facts box on the backside of the label where it tells you how many calories and how many calories from fat and protein and all of that. So I'm, um, you have to imagine somebody has to actually go in and like graphically build that box and put all of those numbers in there. And so the scientists and, uh, and the nutritionists at Young Living would go through and build this packet. This is a little bit of insight into how things work at Young Living. I, I don't know if this is interesting or not. So they, they would go through and they would build this packet of information for claims that we can put on the label and um, all sorts of safety stuff and just make sure that everything is all good and hunky-dory. <laughs> so and then it was uh, our job those the, the few of us that worked in the labeling department at the time to go through and consolidate all of this information in a nice and pretty way in a supplement facts box and on the label and all of that the ingredients you have to imagine all this has to be consolidated onto the label so that was our job and so I was working on this nutritional label and uh, I came across a little error or what I thought was an error. And I was just doing the math in my head and I was like, there's no way that, I can't remember what it was. I was like, the calories aren't adding up or there's no way that the, the fat from this would equal this other thing. So I, I just picked up the label packet. Young Living was very small back then. And I walked into the lab <laughs> and I walked into the director of, I think he was the director of product formulation. And I, and I set the label or the packet down on his desk and I said, I think there's an error in, in this information, I'm not sure exactly where the error is, but, and, and I kind of pointed it out to him. And he looked at me and he's like, how do you know this? <laughs> like, like, how would you know that this was an error? And I was like, well, I took high school chemistry. And, um, and so right then and there, he actually offered me a, a position as his research assistant. <laughs> He's like, I've been looking for a research assistant for a while, and it seems pretty obvious that you know more than just how to build a supplement facts box on a label. So, um, so, I, so I switched positions. My previous manager was not very happy about that. Um, but anyway, I jumped into, so now I was working in the lab. And um, so this guy, uh, this was Mark Schroeder. I don't know if you guys have. Uh, yeah. You know, yeah. yeah. So he, Mark was Gary's previous like kind of travel assistant companion. Mm. 
photographer person, um, graphic designer, make sure his presentation's ready to go on stage person. And, but Mark was um, kind of, uh, he was married now and had a kid. And I think a second kid was on the way and he didn't want to be traveling so much. So uh, I didn't know this at the time, but he was sort of positioning me to kind of take over his role as Gary's traveling assistant. So then fast forward another few months, <laughs> there was, um, Gary had this idea of putting together a documentary about the frankincense trail. And so he had already taken one kind of preliminary trip to, the, to, uh, to Oman and they had shot a few things, but it wasn't done very well. And um, so he was coming back and anyway, he wanted to, to go back to Oman and, and start working on this documentary. And they weren't very happy with the, the cinematographer that had gone with them the first time. And, um, and I didn't know exactly what kind of a person they were, <clears throat> they were looking for, but I, I sort of said, well, you know, I have some experience doing this. And, and they said, and, and Gary said, okay. <laughs> and he went upstairs. My, my office was in the lab on the first floor and his office was um, on the third floor of the building. And so he went upstairs and came back. I didn't know he was going to do this, but he, he basically just handed me this video camera. And he said, okay, go shoot something this weekend and uh, show it to us on Monday. And we'll, we'll, you know, take a look and see whether you're qualified to go on this trip or not. So I was basically given a job interview op opportunity. So, um, and my, uh, my little brother and sister, I, I come from a very big family. There's 11 kids all together. And um, so my younger brother and sister, so I'm, I'm the second oldest, so I have lots of, there's lots of younger siblings. So even though I'm an adult, well into it being adult by this time, there's my parents still have little kids. So they were participating in an archery competition. And so that weekend I went and shot like a little tiny miniature archery competition documentary and uh, with this camera. And um, there's actually a whole other story of, I wasn't able to get the video, the files to be imported into my computer. So I kind of like borrowed my brother's university ID to sneak into the computer lab at the university so that I could convert the files on the university lab computers and then take them home. Anyway, it was a very hectic weekend of me trying to make this work. Um, and, uh, but in the end, I showed it to Gary on Monday, not telling him any of the backstory of, of not, uh, uh, of the fact that I sort of didn't really know what I was doing. Um, but I had hustle, right? Like I was willing to hustle, um, in order to, to do this, to, to, to make this happen. And I, that's, so that's really the story that I want to tell is I feel like, my, my foot in the door at Young Living was a whole lot of hustle to learn some graphic design software. And then I got lucky because I had studied well in school for chemistry. And then there was a whole lot of hustle um, to, to, to learn some video editing skills and to learn how to use a professional video camera. Um, I mean, I was like, Friday night after Gary gave me that camera, like I was pouring over the user manual. I was like, what does this button do? And what is this thing? And, and, um, and this is before like YouTube really took off. Like this is 2008. Like you can go on YouTube and find anything now. Like this, this there's not like YouTube videos about how to use a camera, a professional video camera in 2008. That just doesn't exist yet. Um, so, so that was like a whole lot of hustle and basically, the whole rest of my career working for Gary was just th that same weekend repeated over and over and over and over <laughs> again. So that's, that's my story. That's Yeah, but I was going to say that that's so interesting that you shared this because 
I think that also points to what Gary is about. Like for all that I know of him, he doesn't require you to have the papers. He, yes. wants, he wants you to show, he just wants you to show up. Like right. you come here, do the hustling, say you can do it and jump and, and do it. And I think that there's um, a really strong parallel to running a young living business. Because I think so many people think, oh, well, I don't know how to do that thing. Mm -hmm. Well, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Just start moving. And when you come across a problem, like figure out that one problem, but don't, but don't think, oh, well, I'm not going to know how to do this. So I'm not going to worry about it. Or I'm going to wait until I perfectly know mm -hmm. how to do all of these things before I get started. Yeah. Like that's not the way to run your life. Just get going so that's that's sort of my story <laughs> yeah and and i can imagine that that's probably what got you um sticking around with gary for so long mm -hmm. i mean even for us just members and distributors like from a side we watch how he moves and we know how hard he was working how far he was traveling and and i remember going up to you before and going like are you okay, John? I, because I don't dare to go up and ask Gary, are you okay, Gary? Because I know Gary's just geared up for action all the time. But we're going up to you, who follows him everywhere, and we're like, are you okay, John? Are you like, you know, like the years of just running with Gary and just doing everything. Um, there must have been exciting stories. Tell us something that was like, your best memory with Gary, the trouble. Something crazy, something, I don't know. I'm sure there are a lot. Oh, best memory. Oh, it could be the scariest. Um. Uh, yeah, the scariest, the scariest thing that ever happened I actually wasn't with Gary, <laughs> um, but uh, so this was this was also this story was also very early on. It has directly to do with Gary. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so this so I don't know exactly the date for this, but I'm guessing it was probably 2009. Mm -hmm. Yes. This was probably sometime in 2000, late 2009 or early 2010. And it was still, we were still in the process of shooting this Frankincense Trail documentary. And um, I don't know if I should tell this story. Maybe it's really boring. But I, um, so, so I went to Petra Jordan and I was supposed to organize this camel caravan shooting we were filming of this camel caravan and um so then i was uh and then gary was going to fly to oman and i was going to go down there and meet him so i'm completely alone entirely alone nobody's with me and then i was going to go down and meet gary in oman and um but so so i went to to petra and i'm driving back to the to the airport, I'm trying to remember the details exactly, but mm -hmm. something happened and I think I accidentally cut off this like dump truck driver <laughs> in, somewhere in li some little town in Jordan. And I think he was trying to run me down, like, like he was gonna run me off the road and I was just in this little tiny rental car and, and I was like trying to get away from the stump truck driver. <laughs> oh dear. And anyway, it was, it was a, um, I do remember that as being like one of the really, really scary experiences for me. Um, but now that I'm thinking back, I can't really recall the details. <laughs> but, it's, but it's also interesting because I'm sure that traveling alongside Gary all the time, um, the places that he expects you to go to, um, yeah. just puts you in spots like that, like where you, you don't know what to expect. I think it was funny because I was uh, chatting with Nikki and that was 
almost exactly the same thing Nikki said as well. So she was traveling so much with Gary for all the work with YLF. And that literally is like, um, just, just because you have to do the work with Gary. So it transports you to these places where you have no clue what's going to happen to you and you just need to live like Gary. Yeah. yeah. Um, I guess I could tell you one of the stories that Gary liked to tell, uh -huh. um, which was, was this trip that he and I took down the, um, I think it's called the Rio Bobanasa River. So Rio means river, right? Yeah. Um, the, the Rio Bobanasa in Ecuador. And this is, this is when I still, this is actually a few months after I went to the Middle East with Gary for the first time. Mm. So I don't really know Gary very well and I don't know if he knows me very well, but he's kind, he was kind of that type of person who just trusted people like a lot. He would trust you until you gave him a reason to not trust you. Whereas mm. other people, it kind of like takes time to build up trust. Hmm. And, um, but so I think that the, the trip to the Middle East was in March and then this story. Um, and so before that, Gary probably didn't really know my name, but this story happened probably at the end of May or early June. So we're, we're talking only a, like two or three months between, um, you know, between when Gary started to kind of know who I was and traveled to the Middle East. So, um, but we went down this river to look for new aromatic plants in Ecuador. And, and I had no idea what I was getting myself into. <laughs> and um, so uh, I think the trip was three days and two nights. I know that it was at least that long. It could have been four days and three nights, but I know it was at least three days and two nights. And we, we, we drove, we, we flew to Quito and then we rented some gear and we got this guy, Giovanni, and then we drove for a really long way to get to this stream, this river. It was like a really shallow stream. And then we put our rafts into the river and we're going down river and everything's good. And sometimes, like the, the stream bed would get really wide and the, the water gets really shallow. And we actually would have to get out and walk and like drag our raft over some rocks, right? So I'm just trying to paint a picture. So that was day one. And then um, day two, we'll assume this was three days. <laughs> day two was um, uh, there were like tributaries that would join. And so the river got a little bit bigger. And um, so then on day three, um, then, so I, I should have prepared these photos because I actually have some video, but whatever, you just get to hear me talk. Um, then, on, then on the end of day two, where we you know, pull over to the ed edge of the river and we, we kind of camp with these, this family or like a little tiny village. No, it's, not, it's like three families <laughs> living together. <laughs> Um, so we're camping in just like a normal tent. And, um, but that night, just as we were going to sleep, it started to rain and it rained like all night long. And this, this tent that was supposed to be waterproof, like I remember laying there in the tent and it's just like dripping on my face all night long. And luckily it wasn't cold. Like, the temperature was probably like 75 or 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Anyway, warmer than room temperature, right? And this rain is probably the same temperature. So, so I, I'm just basically like taking a shower all night long. <laughs> and, and I eventually was able to fall asleep, even though I'm just like getting pelted with water. And Gary was like, Gary could sleep anywhere. And he was just like, just sleep. and I was like, I don't know how this guy is sleeping, but anyway, I eventually fell asleep. So we wake up the next morning and we're like sitting in a bathtub. <laughs> like, um, like this tent is literally just like a miniature swimming pool. And um, so like we, you know, you, you can like kind of fold the door down and the water ran out. And then Gary grabbed a, a towel and he was like mopping up. And 
I have video of this, but he's like wringing this towel out and he's like joking saying, it's a good thing this tent was waterproof. Can you imagine what it would be like if it weren't? So, um, and uh, so then we, uh, um, so what really, really happened with, with that much water, this stream, this river that we were in went from being something that you could just stand up in at any time mm -hmm. to, to being like a raging torrent of water. So I'm totally sure that the, the river rose at least eight feet. So we're talking like two and a half meters, right? So, oh, like, so we went to bed and then we woke up and the water level is two and a half to three meters higher. And, um, and we didn't have any life jackets. Um, I don't know why we didn't take life jackets, but I think maybe we were just assuming that you could just stand up. And um, so, but we were scheduled to get to this particular spot and then hike up to an airstrip. And then this plane was supposed to come in and pick us up. So we were supposed to be there at this specific time to get picked up. And so anyway, we packed up camp and we put our stuff in this raft and we headed down the river. And there were a couple of times that I was like, if we tip over, like, cause there's whirlpools and rapids mm -hmm. and it was just, and there's like all these logs and debris and tree branches like in the river with us now. Cause it's, you know, picked up all of this debris and it's just shuttling it downstream. And so I was, I was terrified. I was like, if we, if we um, capsize, like, will we, will we survive? And our guide, Giovanni, he was really nervous too. But anyway, we get out, we, we, we get over to the edge of the river <laughs> and we, we uh, pack up all of our stuff. And our guide said, um, he told us, he's like, this part of the, the Amazon rainforest um, the people here are, are a little bit hostile to outsiders. He was like, so don't, don't step off the path. Mm -hmm. We need to hike up this path to get to this airstrip, um, like grass, dirt airstrip. And um, he's like, don't leave the path. When we get to the airstrip, stay out in the open. It's like, if you need to pee, don't go into the trees. <laughs> like, he's like, you could end up disappearing. Like they could just grab you and just take you off and you would wow. never be seen again. Mm -hmm. So, um, and so when we were packing up the airplane, there were a bunch of men that came and they had like, I don't know if it was tattoos or paint on their faces, but they looked scary. And um, so, so that's the part of the story that Gary always tells is like these people who wanted to kill us. <laughs> and I was like, no, the river was going to kill us. So, um, that was that was definitely scary, but that's just kind of a contrast in the in the way that I saw the world and that Gary saw the world is I saw Mother Nature as being this this kind of dangerous element, and I think Gary saw these 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 hostile tribesmen as being a, a much more of a threat. So hmm. I don't know. And actually, that was real. I actually also wanted to ask you. So in all these environments when you clearly felt threatened, like whether it was the river, whether it was the tribe, like how, how does Gary respond to all this fear? Um, so I actually, I, you know, I'm not sure he was ever afraid to be honest. Mm. He would, that was just the story that he told, <laughs> <laughs> right? He was like, these people, they were going to kill us. <laughs> and, um, and they, and they very well could have. I'm not trying to undermine mm. the, 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 the risk that we were in or, or, or the, but I'm always like, Gary, don't you remember the river? <laughs> like, remember how dangerous that was and how careful you and I had to be and how we were, you know, avoid doing everything we could to avoid these, these whirlpools. Cause he and I were in the same raft. You know, we, our, our fates were very much tied together. And, and he seems to just gloss over the river <laughs> and goes directly to, you know, but I, don't, I don't think he was scared, but yeah, you know, he, he, wants, he wants to tell a good story just like anybody else. <laughs> but it's so common. I mean, even conventions, Gary speaks so much about 
even just the whole idea of fear and how even like from the business perspective, like what you touched on. Right. So how yeah. do we how do we deal with fear? How do we face up to it? And and so often with with witness how much he himself is a testament of just like I'll just do it anyway. Like it's presenting itself as something scary, but I'll just do it anyway. And even in your account, like everything that you were you were telling me, I was like and the audience here, I was like, that's freaky. And just I can't imagine. It's like, and that's just like one little travel. And you guys have traveled so much through the years um, to do all the work that he's always wanted to do, to find the oils, to establish the connections. How did? Well, well, I think. It, it, yeah. I, sorry. I, I don't. I don't know what question you're going to ask, but I think it's just like anything else. Once you start getting practiced with it, like when you, when you become practiced with ignoring the fear mm. and, and just, and, and overcoming the fear by saying, I want this thing more than I'm afraid of the consequences of failing. Right. And I think that that was something that Gary was very good at being practiced in and just saying, this is something I want. Mm. And I'm not afraid of failing. I want the thing more than I'm afraid of failure. Wow. Yeah. And when yeah, you do I that over and over and over again, you become good at it. And I think that's something that we all need to practice. Yeah. That's, that's a really beautiful one to actually just, it's a good reminder even for myself. And I was actually going to ask you if there was one thing that being with Gary all these years, like one thing that really impacted you, like, like it could be this about just facing fear. You must want that goal a lot more than let the fear stop you. It could be that, but it could be something else. So I'll, I'll love to hear from you, like having yeah. been around with Gary so much, how did he impact you? Um. Yeah, I, I think that I'll, I'll tell you another story. I hope Mary's okay that I'm telling these stories. <laughs> she probably doesn't know this one. Well, maybe not the details of it, but um, so uh, this, is an, this is another story that's fairly early on. The, you know, the early stories to me are the most memorable because <laughs> it's like, wait, I'm still kind of getting to know Gary. And so he's still a little bit more fascinating. Not that he should have ever become unfascinating, but just, mm. you know, the, er when you, the early stories seem to make uh, a bigger impact. But um, so you're probably all aware that there's this thing called winter harvest that happens um, both at the... Fort Nelson Farm up in, um, well, in Fort Nelson, <laughs> but the Northern Lights Farm in Fort Nelson. Yeah. And um, also the, uh, um, the St. Mary's Farm and the Highland Flats Farm, right? So there's this winter harvest event that happens. So we had shot, we, I had shot all of this footage of all of this video of this whole process and Gary wanted to go through and narrate it so that we could like kind of tie his narration together with all of this footage. But he had been like really busy. And so we hadn't, he didn't have his narration when we were up at the harvest. Obviously he was way too busy. So by the time he actually had time to stop and narrate this video, um, it was like April or something like that. And we're back in Utah. And he really wanted to have snow, <laughs> right? Because he was like, it was like, I can't go stand out in my backyard or at the Mona farm in April, because, you know, stuff's starting to turn green. Like the plants are coming out of the ground. There's no snow on the ground. So we packed up these, we packed up these, he packed up these snowmobiles and we drove up into the Uinta Mountains. You probably know that Utah has some very, 
very high, very tall mountains. And, um, and so the snow stays on really late into the year. And so we, we, we took these snowmobiles, these snow machines, and we went up into the mountains and we found this really beautiful, pristine snow. And Gary's like, this is where I, this is where I want to, to shoot this. But, um, so I had driven to Gary's house that morning and left my car there and I jumped in his truck with the trailer with the snow machines. And as we were leaving his house, um, just going through the gate, he opens the door and he gets out and kind of walks to where I can't see him. And I'm just like, what is, what is going on? And he was gone for a, a minute or two, right? Lo longer than to just look at something. And then he came back and he kind of looked a little bit pale. And um, like, he didn't, you know, he didn't look super great. I looked at him, I was like, you good? And he's like, yep, I'm good. <laughs> I was like, okay. So then we head out of his house and we're headed up the canyon. And um, we, we get to the spot and we unload and you know, we're, we, we drive these machines up there and get all the stuff set up and we're shooting. Um, it was, there were three of us. There was me and another camera operator and then Gary. From, from what I remember, there were three. And it might have been four, doesn't matter. But suddenly, like, we're in the middle of shooting and Gary, like, just stops. And, and uh, he actually throws up, like, he vomits. And I was like, Gary, what is going on? And he was like, he, he actually vomited from pain. He was passing a kidney stone. Oh. Wow. Okay. So my question to you is, who goes snowmobiling oh on a, when they're passing a kidney stone? Uh, okay. I, I'm, right? I'm kind of like speechless right now. It's like... Right? So, so, and I, so that's what had happened when we were leaving his house that morning. Uh-huh. Like, so he had just... He was gone, well, yeah. Right? So he was not feeling well. I didn't know what was going on. So it actually got so bad that we had to just pack up and I, I'm not sure that we finished the filming, mm. um, but we packed up and, and drove back um, and he didn't drive back, but um, one, of a, one of us drove instead. But I guess the, the reason that I tell that story is like Gary wanted to do this so badly right? And, and it really is a story of passion, right? That, because so many of us were like, oh, I don't feel well today, or oh, I'm a little tired today, and I'm not going to do this thing, mm. or I'm not going to, I, I'm not going to achieve my dreams, right? Yeah. I'm going to wait tomorrow when I feel better to achieve my dreams. And so I think the lasting impact that Gary gave me whether I've really learned that lesson well or not is, is just that if you really want something, mm. go out and do it. And it doesn't matter if you are passing a kidney stone that day, go accomplish your dreams and, and, and fight to make them happen. So I don't know if that's a good story or not, but. Oh my goodness. That I don't know. I mean, like, I'm sure there are a million, gazillion um, Gary stories, but, you know, as usual, is there anything, even to that, like that moment that you saw that he was sick, he was sick, mm -hmm. but it's, he, he pushed on because he knows that that's important and that he's scheduled it, it's been delayed. And, and that's the thing about Gary, right? I, that we always remember, he always has that heart of wanting to accomplish something, get it done. Um, and it's also much, um, much more farsighted. He wants it to be done for the members. He wants them to have the materials and to be right. able to see something come to fruition. Mm -hmm. So it's just amazing hearing you share all that. I know we're well past the 30 minutes that you, you oh. said. 
<laughs> it was funny because I was going like, we're way past 30 minutes. John says- This means that I'm really slow at telling stories. No, no, no. I, people are still coming in. People are still, want, I'm, I'm sure, and people are still waking up, right? Over in US. Oh, so right, yeah. They're all hopping in to the listen. So if you have a little bit more time, yeah, sure. Five more, 10 more minutes. Um, Cause I do have one more question on my end and I'm just yeah. going to kind of look at what people have um, asked. Sure. Like, yeah. We can keep going. I, I think this is just going to be super personal. What do you miss about this person? Miss about Gary. Oh yeah. Um, So, uh, yeah, right now we're preparing for convention, of course, and uh, I'm helping Mary to work on her presentation. And yesterday I was um, looking for some photos or doing like a background, like just, just researching something or fact checking something. And I, I opened up the, the PDF for the D. Gary Young, the world leader, the world leader in essential oils, the book, Mary's book. Mm. You probably are all familiar with, with Mary's book. And because uh, it's, it's kind of like the go-to uh, reference guide for us to make sure it's like, <laughs> these are the facts, right? This is, and, you know, I was scrolling through it and there's, it's just full of photos of Gary. And, um, and I kind of just, I kind of had to just close it. You know, I was like, oh, that's like, um, cause yeah, I mean, you miss the guy, right? And, uh, but I think just, uh, just having, just having that reminder of this drive to accomplish things at, at all cost, right? I think that's kind of what I miss the most of just, just like this constant challenge, right? Mm. Um, to, to learn it, not, not that, not that I've given up on those things, but there's, there's not somebody there that's just driving you quite as hard <laughs> as maybe, um, as maybe you would be moving mm. um, just because he was so good at, moving and and driving things and such an amazing leader when it came to um saying things like that's not my job right like mm -hmm. he would never he he would do anything and and if that means painting a wall or jumping underneath a tractor to um, you know, swap out some broken piece. Like it was, nothing was beneath him. Mm. And and I don't think that we've gotten so far away from that. But I think that we're moving towards a world that uh, trends towards specialization. Right, that, that people can become very, very good at a very narrow range of tasks. And, and you know, Gary was not a specialist. He, there were lots of things that he did where he was definitely not the best person at doing those things. Mm. But it doesn't matter, he got them done, mm. right? And and so I think that that's another just really good example of that, that we can try to follow in our lives of like, just do it, do it yourself the best you can rather than trying to wait around for some specialist to come along to do it better. And I don't, um, does that make sense? I, I, I think I, I'm getting you. I, because it's like it's like Gary, the part that you talk about where Gary challenges, um, 
I think in, in the place that we're at right now, a lot of us get very reasonable. Um, yeah. You don't feel like it, you're not doing well? Sure, do it another day. But Gary has such um, a spirit about him. It's like, like he holds the essence of, it's like, why wouldn't you do it? Like around yeah. him, there is no such thing as, why wouldn't you do it? Like, like I, I don't know. It's like, it's hard to find the words, but I actually feel what you're saying. It's like, like I, I miss that too. I miss those times when he would just challenge you. Not because he's trying to force you, but because he knows that you can do it. And you're just shortchanging yourself at that point in time. And he would be that one person. He will continue to be that one spirit to, even if it's not communicating it, just looking at you, he would have you understand that, are you sure you're not doing this? You know? So, yeah. So, I don't know. I'm lost for words too. Just, yeah, listening yeah. to all the stuff that you said. Um, but I, I am. Yeah, I I'm I'm all gibberish right now because okay. yeah. yeah. Well, I, there's actually there's actually something that I forgot to mention that maybe maybe I can mention really quickly. Uh huh. That, that is where where am I sitting? So yeah. I am. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I Tell am us. at yeah. So I'm at the global headquarters. You know the this brand new building that we've been at for about a year. Maybe not quite one year now. Mm -hmm. Um. I actually don't really remember when people moved in because I moved in last because <laughs> Mary and I were working on her book and we stayed at the old office. <laughs> and I think we moved in sometime in June, but I think most everybody was moving in about now, um, either late April or early May. But so we've been in this building for a year, but it has a library and all of almost all of these books I don't, um, maybe I should just kind of pan the camera around. It's, it's not a huge library. I, it's just, it's kind of a large room. Um, oh yeah, that's a door. And there's actually another bookshelf right there. Um, and, then, and then there's this other, the reason I like to sit in here, I've done a lot of Zoom calls in here, is because it has this beautiful like little atrium type view. And there's a skylight. And so I look really great because <laughs> I'm a photographer, so I have, I have photographer lighting vanity, and I want to at least, even though I might not look good, I want to at least be lit well. <laughs> it's a legit requirement, so, yes. So these, so these books, um, almost all of them came from Gary and Mary's house, and, um, and there's still, a, there's probably at least this many books still at, Mary's house that were Gary's. Hmm. So, um, I don't think we could fit them all in here. There just there just aren't enough shelves. But um, he obviously was a uh, collector of books and probably a voracious reader as well. But it just goes to show and and there's so many different subjects. You know, he had interest in so many different things. And I've tried to go through and categorize them. Uh, Jared Turner jokes that uh, my job title could, if, you know, it's just a joke, but I'm the chief librarian. <laughs> 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 and, and when I was in high school, uh, uh, junior high and high school, I, I worked at a library, the, the city library for like five years. Um, so I actually know all about libraries, but um, it just goes to show that, so I've tried to organize the books by by category a little bit. Um, but there's lots of books on health and weight loss and nutrition. And there's a shelf just for the books that the members have written. And, um, and travel books. And there's this huge section of National Geographic. And um, yeah, like these, I don't know if you can see that top, all of those books on that top shelf, all, all the way along right there. Those are all just like travel and geography wow. books from different countries. And so, I mean, you could tell you, this is, it's very obvious what he was interested in, but it was, his interests were broad. <laughs> mm, mm. So, and uh, obviously was uh, 
you know, attempting to, uh, how, how do you, I don't know how to say it in English. <laughs> like learn your entire life, right? Yeah, yeah, that's, so, that's very much him. Yeah. So anyway, I forgot to introduce the space. Uh, I was going to kind of end off with that because I did notice, well, and you did mention that you're picking the library specifically because this is also where Gary Keats, I mean, right. this, these are all his books and his treasured references. So, correct, yeah. Um, thank you, John. Thank you so much. But, but before we end, and mm -hmm. I do I, I respectfully, because this is the period, like, I think for all Young Living members, um, the HQ is so busy right now preparing for um, virtual international grand convention. This is the first time we're actually going to have this. Um, so we've caught all the speakers right smack in this crazy busy time. Like when we first asked, when I first asked John or Todd or Lauren, they all didn't know that this is a massively crazy week for them. The amount of work that they have to do. So, so just the fact that he's waking up at 6 a.m., getting out here to the office to be able to do this for us. Um, so grateful. But before we let you go, before we mm -hmm. let you go, I really just want to quickly just see if anyone has like a really, really burning question that they, they feel. Sure, I'd be, I'd be happy to answer them. I mean, there are some here, um, just some I think will take you forever to like, we'll, we'll reach into deep stories. Um, but I kind of like just, there's, there's a kind of like cute question. Is there anything that Gary would avoid? Do you know? Or is he like, I would try anything? I think Gary would do anything he could to avoid paperwork. <laughs> I, I like that. He, he would avoid paperwork. <laughs> I, I, I can't think of a better answer or... or <laughs> <laughs> That's actually really hilarious. He okay. would. I actually can imagine him like oh. so not wanting to be in the office or in a Oh school. yeah. 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 That's that's <laughs> um, let's see. Do we have uh hmm that would take you quite long to explain. I'm sure somebody wanted to actually know a little bit about the Petra Jordan journey, but I'm sure that's gonna take you another like couple of days to tell us all of that and what did you find there in the Amazon if you remember those trips um yeah okay so the Amazon oh gosh um so I think I think one of the reasons for that particular trip was to find, um, I, I, I could be wrong, I don't want to give incorrect information, but I think that the, uh, there's a large part of the Okatea that we get that I think is wild crafted, but I know that we've been growing it, like we've been cultivating it, mm. but I know that early on a large part was wild crafted. So we were trying, I think part of the trip was to find um, a greater area mm. from which to source this, this wild crafted Okatea. Wow. Okay. Um, I might be wrong. I, that might be all bad information, but it was, um, it was very early on in, in my time with Young Living and I was just playing catch up. <laughs> like, I, I really had only known Gary for a couple of months yeah. and I was still kind of new to Young Living and um, there's all sorts of stuff I didn't understand, so. Mm, okay, and just one last, one last, last question. Uh, this is from Mary May LeCast. Uh, what was the most challenging part you've encountered in working with Gary and how did it help you reach what you've reached now? The most challenging part of working with Gary. <laughs> oh. 
Um, it's funny, I'm just trying to imagine you doing the hustling over the weekend over your video camera, yeah, like every yeah. single day. Right. I think, I think sometimes the most challenging part, uh, I, you know, I somehow, I, I want to think of maybe a good story to tell, but maybe I, um, uh, yeah, I, um, I, so I don't really, I can't really think of a really great story, but I think the most challenging part was just um how you know he always just wanted he wanted stuff now <laughs> mm. right and just there's um and and sometimes sometimes i would have the skills or the knowledge or the connections to be able to deliver things now right like cuz i was amazing at like this one thing and then sometimes a new totally different thing would come along and and maybe it was maybe Gary thought it would be similar to this other thing that I'm really good at but to me it's completely different <laughs> and so he's like well why can't it's like you can do all these other things why can't you do this <laughs> <laughs> so he kept his expectation of you has always just been the same Don will deliver that's it <laughs> right and so there were there were times i'd be like okay i got i um yeah but i mean it was also my own fault right like i would i was always just like yes i'll do that yes i'll do that. there were so many times where i said yes i'll do that and then i'm like running to google how do i do this <laughs> it's like i don't even i don't even know what i agreed to do <laughs> it's like yes i want this adventure and so I'm going to tell you that I know how to do this thing and then I'm going to learn out, run out and like learn how to do it so that I don't let you down <laughs> and I can go. <laughs> but you know what? I, I am very, very sure. I'm absolutely very, very sure that that is possibly one thing that Gary love about you, that he would, he would ask you and you would just go, yeah, I can do that. Even if it was hell no. I don't know how to do that and I, I will meet Google, but I'm going to tell you yes and I'm, we will figure it out. I think that's the one thing I, I can't, yeah, I can't see any other way. Like Gary just loves that spirit and the fact that you, you can catch up with him, like how I introduce you. It's like, yeah. Thank you so much. I, I think there are, still, there are questions still coming in, but you know what? I actually know that we need to really let you go because it's a crazy week for you guys. And I just want to say on behalf of every single person that's tuning in right now who will tune in, um, I don't know if you realize that you're making such a big difference to a lot of people. Yeah. Because um, I think two years pass and... I think each one of us still holds so many memories of him. Um, he's, he's almost impossible to kind of just forget. Like if you have an experience with him, you will have the experience with him. And you have had so many, and you've been so willing to share with us and you know, let us have a glimpse of who he was, who he still is to all of us and to teach us the lessons that he's always um, been about, that whole spirit of just do it, don't be afraid, get up, you are bigger than fear. Like just go out there and make it happen. Yeah. Thank you, John, because you're, you also embody that. So I really want to thank you for showing up that way. Um, because if you didn't, it's an honor, it was an honor yeah. too. because if you didn't, I'm sure you are not going to be here. You wouldn't have been able to catch up and we wouldn't have been able to hear all these amazing stories. So thank you very much for starting this week for us. And I think for today, this is, oh my goodness, Nikki just went. Yeah, yes. I just saw that. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Nikki. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, I, I love you guys so much. Thank you. I mean, like so many people are just saying thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm going to leave you to have the rest of a great day. We'll catch you again. And so, yeah. Thank you so much. Okay. All right. You're welcome. Everybody Take else, care. thank you for tuning in. Um, just keep following the Facebook. We've got videos um, of Gary, his Indiana Jones days. It's, it's funny stuff, just watching what Gary does all the time. Um, old clips of him on the farms, um, just him teaching at convention, him sharing, him massaging and just holding someone's feet. There's, there's a video coming up that's just like that. It's just amazing to watch. So thank you guys. Um, and for all those who know of Gary, um, perhaps today, take some time and just remember and connect to that one story, that one important lesson that this man has actually light up in your life. See you guys very soon. Bye.